You've bought a new dumb phone. You're wearing a pair of low-rise jeans. And you're off to a mate's to play Nintendo. But what to listen to on this imaginary retro journey? Cassette tape, of course, on your personal Walkman. Or for the extrovert, a ghetto blaster. Lady Gaga single-handedly doubled the sales of cassettes worldwide when she released her album Chromatica in 2020. In the UK, cassettes just reached a 20-year high and record stores here in Aotearoa have also been getting on board. They're small, they're cool. They're like little plastic containers and you open them up and they've got the booklets inside of them. Um, don't they sound a bit shite though? Oh, absolutely they sound a bit shit. I mean, they're lo-fi for a reason. <laughs> People like to hold music in their hands. We live in the digital age, everything's on the computer. It stresses me out. I can go to a show, but then I walk away and it's gone. But I can have something sentimental to take home with me. You fall in love with the record that's stuck in your car. I feel like I've gained quite a few fans from having CDs and cassettes, because, you know, that's what they play in their car. So they'll pick that up and then end up listening to the album hundreds of times. Tapes are still just tiny plastic players in the music market, far behind CDs and vinyl, and they do have a habit of going kaput. We used to uh, wrap sellotape around them or something when they used to split, or we used to put a pencil in there and, and tighten them, and that was, that was kind of how you used to do it. You'd be sitting around and, and you'd be like, damn it, and you'd, you'd pull the thing out, and, you'd, and it would be so detailed and uh, you'd have to get it right. And who can forget their very first tapes? I had Spice Girls, Venga Boys, yeah, on my Walkman. <laughs> there was this pretty underground band back in the days called Wu Chang, and they <laughs> and they released um, the Thirty Six Chambers album, and I was like one of the only kids at my school that had it. So when word sort of got around, I was making dubs of that. And unlike Spotify, which pays songwriters 0.005 of a cent per song, they're a way for musicians to earn a bit of cash. It just allows them to do something in like a small units. So they can do like 20 tapes, 50 tapes, 100 to 100 tapes is really getting up there. I deal with a lot of like punk bands and metal bands and indie bands and they put so much more than just the cover, they put inserts, they put patches, stickers, you know, like it's a really rad package that you're getting when you're buying these, cool. these tapes. Good pick. Good pick. Yeah, so it's one for the true fans, that one. And remember, two types of cassette tape, the one you buy from the shop and then the, the blank one, the C90, oh. and you put it in and then you w wait listening to the radio for the song that you want to mm. tape. And sometimes I used to call the DJ and say, can you play the song and can you not talk over the stuff? <laughs> I'm sure the DJs really appreciate that it. That is the simple. most Jesse melody. <laughs> Every other kid around the world is sitting there like waiting for the moment they've finished. Not Jesse. Oh, I'm just going to let him know that's very inconvenient. <laughs> yeah, the old mixtape on the C90 where you put a whole lot of songs yeah. on as an effort to sort of romance exactly. someone. Ah. Uh, I made one of those once. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to romance someone and. Never heard back from them. <laughs> it was an unusual one. I actually talked on it. Oh, no, Penny, no. And, like, oh, and there was no music. No. For so, 90 minutes? Yeah, but it was, it was the world's first podcast, I believe. <laughs> <laughs>